Hello and welcome to another episode of the Otaku Experience. All right, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I don't really have the patience in this episode. Um, the way that this story has panned out has just kind of ruined my mood. Um, so no intro, no big happy thing at the beginning because I'm not really feeling that right now. And so that would be kind of inauthentic of me to do that. I feel like we're mainly going to cover this story Maybe one story after this, and then I'm going to kind of wrap it up because I don't really know if I can be like, oh my gosh, let's talk about this anime that's coming out. That's so cool. Like this situation is so goofy in the way that it's playing out when there is such an easy solution that, uh, okay, so the MAPA situation uh, continues. We've been talking about it for a few months. If you guys need any context, um, it, particularly with Jujutsu Kaisen season two, that's kind of when uh, the straw broke the camel's back, um, where the production schedule um, is causing animators to speak out. Uh, they made their animators sign an NDA, so they couldn't speak out, but the animators still are. Um, directors have started speaking out. Uh, leaks have been going on. Just a big fiasco over at MAPPA, and we found out last week that this is because MAPPA has this plan where they're trying to top... Kill Annie and Ufo Table, which are the standards in anime in terms of anime video quality, um, in terms of animation quality. Um, and MAPPA is trying to top that. And so their efforts to top that meant uh, scaling back the budgets on things, which, uh, which in the anime uh, production area, in the anime industry, the, um, the budgets are already super slim. So, like, they're just making them even slimmer. Uh, taking away time for the animators to make things um, and then cranking out as much stuff as possible, making like three or four shows on average when that should, you know, be at most like that's your crunch season usually is like three shows at most. And that'll only happen for like a few weeks if there's like a big crossover. But that's like the state MAPA is always um, acting on is that state where they're just in that crunch mode. And the mental health of everybody involved is decreasing, and it's just it's just awful. And so this week, uh, I, I didn't think we were going to be talking about this this week. I was like, unless maybe something happens that's good. Um, but no, uh, this happened, uh, where this happened over on November 14th and November 15th. Just a bunch of stuff happened on social media where uh, just like a big outcry happened, and I kind of want to just go over all of this. Um yeah, I, I just, I don't, I'm just at a loss for words. Um, I don't really know what to say just because the situation is so stupid. Here we go. So on Twitter, we have at Pirate King 06, who says it's over for Jujutsu Kaisen season two from episode 18. The production committee denied a break and a lot of the animators are expressing their disappointment for their working conditions in MAPA. So the animators asked for a break. Um, or for a delay uh, in the next episode, so that way they can at least catch up a little bit and they're not just so behind. Uh, and MAPPA denied them that. The production of Jujutsu Kaisen has reached its breaking point. As of right now, apparently the episode, uh, season two, episode 17, isn't even finished. Everything after this week's episode is fucked. No animators are going to want to come back and work on Jujutsu Kaisen unless they are given time. So... Look, when this when this came out, this was November 14th. It's now um, November 16th, which I believe is the day that Jujutsu Kaisen episodes air um, is on Thursdays. Uh, and so this was Tuesday, um, Tuesday night even, as you can see, 6 p.m. there. This is showing just how far behind a, a, a studio and a production with the caliber of MAPPA should not be on. They should not be this behind on their schedule, but they are. And then the animators are like, hey, can we have like just a one week delay to catch up on some of this stuff? And MAPPA's like, no, no, figure it out, figure it out. Bad news has arrived and I'm suddenly overwhelmed. The most boring ending I can think of. Ah, the festival is over. Yes, disbanded, disbanded. And so this is the Google Translate as well, which is probably not really helping how this is being said, but... As you can see, just 
sadness all around. Um, and then this happened right before I started filming, so I didn't have time to like properly make a graphic for this or anything. Um, but Jujutsu Kaisen season two director leaves cryptic message after MAPPA production meltdown. And then this is that image with a noose around this character's neck. If, if this is not just the most public outcry ever, I don't know what is. Like, not even, not even your animators anymore. Now it's your directors, the ones in charge of everything, who's just like, they're overwhelmed. Before, I'm not saying the directors didn't care, but before, it was mainly the animators that were crying out. You know, the directors, you know, you know they weren't like, rude or anything but they weren't great either but with this but now the directors are even at this point too and to the point where they have this image of an of an anime character this might be a character from the anime i don't know i'm not caught up but like this is just speaking so loud and clear the mental health of these people and how they're feeling and mappa doesn't even care that's the problem so now we're going to go over this thread here by epi uh, who kind of goes over everything that has happened so far um, in this thread on Twitter. A small thread of what's happening with MAPPA and the collective meltdown of animators over the hellish production of Jujutsu Kaisen. It is mostly from animator Hon Hon's tweet, where he opens up about the impossible and horrible schedule. The higher-ups at MAPPA only care about the end result and neglect the staff improvements. Um, and then the tweet here says, the worst thing is when all of the staff work hard to complete a schedule that would normally be impossible to meet in time and the people above them at the result, uh, look at the results and think I can't say anything and fail to make improvements. I guess the cycle started when I completed one movie in four months and they'll go over this a bit here in a second, but the movie that, that they're talking about in question is Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. The movie that came out last year, that movie was made in four months. Think about that. Hon Hon uh, has literally said that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, uh, the movie which 200, which made 200 million worldwide, completed its horrible schedule in only four months. The average time of animation production for any feature film is two to three years in American and European productions. That's the standard. Why? Why is this taking four months to make? Now, I really like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I, I thought the animation was fan freaking tastic. But I would have been fine waiting a little bit longer. And, and they go into it uh, more here where they talk about how they're getting caught in this thing where they go from um, Attack on Titan, the final season, into uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, into um, Chainsaw Man, and then back into Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. And they're just bouncing around and they don't have time to properly make these huge, these huge scale animes that demand so much. It's different when it's like a slice of life or something that doesn't have these huge action sequences and all of these visual effects involved. I'm not saying it's a lesser medium or whatever, but it's a, just a different type of genre and these higher scale stuff need more time to be made. And the fact that MAPPA is just shooting these out at top speed just to catch up, it's pathetic and it's embarrassing. The staff has requested a delay, but was denied a delay by the production committee. Episodes are being completed mere hours before being aired. This is what Arai Kazuto, director and storyboard of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 13, said in recent tweets. Uh, bad news has arrived and I'm suddenly overwhelmed. The most boring ending I can think of. Ah, the festival is over. Yes, disbanded, disbanded. I was really disappointed. This isn't fun anymore. I wonder. This isn't fun anymore. These are people who love what they do, who get in this industry. Uh, people who get into these industries, especially on the creative end, they love it. Whether they're a writer or a director or an animator or an actor, they just love this medium. They love storytelling. They love the joy that they felt when they consumed stories. And now they want to express that to others. And they're just being killed over it. Okay, let me calm down a bit. The episodes still look good as due to great animators, but they are literally dying. Why, and why can't there be breaks? Multiple factors. Firstly, the production is made up of parties like Toho and Shueisha. So unless there's majority, nothing will happen. This, this is a lot like uh, going back up here to the episodes being made mere hours before they air. This uh, reminds me of Wonder Egg Priority. 
Now, I loved Wonder Egg Priority. Um, I, to me, and I know this is a controversial opinion, to me, that was my favorite anime of 2021. I loved it. But the anime was overwhelmed with production problems, ultimately to the point where they had to do a buffer episode halfway through the season, and then they had to delay the final episode three months to finish it because of how behind the production was, where they were literally, like this is saying, finishing episodes hour bef hours before. But that's Wonder Egg Priority. This is on a much larger scale with Jujutsu Kaisen. This is more people involved. Um, and, and, and as well, they're also probably ramping up what they're doing on different stuff. And another thing that uh, I don't, I forget if they talk about it in this, but MAPPA basically has like the same crew do all of their big stuff. It's the same people who do Jujutsu Kaisen that do Chainsaw Man, that do um, Attack on Titan, and they're just bouncing around. Attack on Titan, the final season, uh, the final chapter, stupid name, whatever, that finale just aired, and it was the exact same team. I mean, not one for one, but, you know, a lot of the same core team that's doing Jujutsu Kaisen. And so they suddenly had to hop over there real quick, do Attack on Titan, and then hop back over to Jujutsu Kaisen as if nothing happened with no delays, with no breaks. And I guess, yes, they had a little bit of a head start with Attack on Titan, but because, it, it, you know, it's one episode and it the last episode aired like six months ago, but still, you know, they, they that entire time they should have been solely working on Jujutsu Kaisen because that is a full 24 episode anime that is airing with uh, two consecutive cores. Uh, Okubo uh, Shunusuke, director of episode 12, posted an image from Shirobako, an anime about producing an anime trying to hang herself while visibly tired. The character in question is an animator in the story of the show, which we already talked about. Just animator Hon Hon also made this now deleted uh, tweet complaining about the production. Everything is too harsh. Uh, everything is really too harsh. What do you think of people? I assume that they're talking to Mop and themselves. Like, like, what do you, what are you thinking? Like, do you even view us as people, bro? Like, what is going on? Like, how can you cause us to work like this? And even still with all this outcry and all of us just asking for the bare minimum, can you just give us a week delay so we can catch up a little bit? And you still say no and push us in these work conditions. Uh, Tsuchigami Itsuki, also known as Miso, who is working as an animator on the show, has retweeted all of their old tweets where they criticized Studio MAPPA. Um, and then they, they don't translate these here, but I assume it's the same, it's the same thing that we've, that we've been seeing. Uh, Amphib uh, Amphibly, who did the uh, uh, KA and AD for the show, tweeted these things as well recently. Uh, so someone asked them to save JJK and they said they're not going back. They're, 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 they would rather like do anything else than go back to that production. Kevin from Sakugaboro, which you might remember for talking extensively with care and attention about anime, its industry and production talked about this entire situation as well. Reminder that if you hire young uh, teams of young, materially ambitious uh, creators because you want to exploit the bombastic appeal of their work, it's not their fail. It's not their failing if it becomes impossible to comply with your studio's pathetic planning. They didn't doom the schedule; it already was. They go all out because of their pride as artists for the sake of their resume, because they want to help friends, and because that's their mindset. It's the damn reason they're there, and what brute forces episodes that on the surface are very impressive despite the schedule. Haku Yugo, another animator, has talked about this as well. Mappa wants to be seen in the same light as KyoAni and UFO Table, which is ironic because their reputations took years to build and are also the studios known for treating their employees well. Hell no, nah, nothing is going to get delayed. Uh, business partners and board members are the only priority. It took Disney 10 years to start feeling the repercussions. I wonder how long this small company will last at how it is uh, universally recognized among the audience right now. Throw your card, uh, throw your key card in the company trash when you leave work. One of Okubo's earlier tweets literally suggests that the staff might have abandoned production at one point owing to the bad conditions. The production desk just abandoned their duties. It's over. And this was just a couple months ago. This is in September. 
You can find a lot more of this uh, in this write-up by Anime Hunch, who have explained this with far more tweets and sources. We do not know where all of this will be heading. We definitely want an animator strike in Japan, but there are a lot of factors which go for that to happen as well. Let's hope for the best. And so that's kind of where we're going to stop with this thread here. But I feel like this just speaks volumes to what is going on in this industry um, and like how like how no logical person can process and understand these working conditions as well as the working conditions staying the same after all of this outcry it makes no sense especially with the studio at mappa's caliber like mappa is one of the most well-known uh most profitable anime studios that exist why are they the one with the worst conditions right now makes no sense so we uh i i want to talk about um this uh and that is uh some of the meltdowns um going on here Uh, and i think i have images for this as well let me see um i don't okay i thought i had an image of this one i don't so, okay, here we go. Jujutsu Kaisen animator meltdown proves a fundamental problem with anime's biggest studio. Um, and it, and it kind of goes over a lot of the same things here, uh, where they talk about a lot of these tweets and questions. Um, so this is probably the first, like, article from a major, not even like a major trade, but like, because this isn't even like in the animator trade. Uh, or the anime trades, like Anime News Network, um, Anime Corner, Anime Trending. Like these people are, they're just being silent on it. And it's ridiculous and it's infuriating. Um, But finally, we have some major website, Screen Rant, talking about this. So that's good. Um, So here's here's where uh, it kind of goes. So as you saw at the end there, they were saying that Um, things really need to, uh, change and the goal would be to have a, um, a animators strike. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It was towards the end here. Uh, yeah. Um, we do not know where all this will be heading. We definitely want an animator strike in Japan, but there are a lot of factors which go for that, uh, to happen as well. Let's hope for the best. Okay. So this is something, um, that uh that needs to happen okay here, here's the i know i said it at the beginning here's the simple solution the simple solution is mappa and the anime industry as a whole but currently the studio in question is mappa that mappa treats their workers like human beings okay now that's the simple solution that's like the one easy short answer now the long answer is mappa won't do that unless they are forced to and how do we force them to they unionize the animators and everybody in the production staff needs to unionize. The animators need to unionize. The directors need to unionize. Um, and they need to be at the point where all of them can leave work. Where if if they leave, what happens when you have a union? We saw with the actors and the writer strike earlier this year. If they leave, they halt production. And then the studios start losing money. And that gives uh, the unions power over the studios because then the studios because they're caring about the money being lost uh, and the unions are caring about uh, the rights and the privileges and everything that they're, uh, the members of those unions get, they suddenly have power over the studios because the studios are basically like a ticking time bomb with their money. Uh, you know, once they can only lose so much before it gets really, really bad. Um, and so uh, they need to unionize Um, And here's the problem with that. Okay, so here's an article from the Medium that says, the problem um, does not end at low wages, at low wage rates either. The studios that uh, animators work are often described as hellish or factory-like. Studio Mappa, responsible for various popular works like Attack on Titan, the final season, and Chainsaw Man has come under fire multiple times for unfair work schedules and animator pay rates. But there seems to be no change. Why? It's simple. Studios can continue to reap the benefits while giving their staff very little reward. Studio UFO Table profited 506 million US dollars off of Demon Slayer Mugen Train. 
which had a budget of only $15 million. The calculations are obvious. So that's an insane profit. UFOTable's founder, Hikaru Kondo, recently admitted to, chat to tax evasion charges. It is clear that it's not a matter of the anime industry not generating enough money, rather that it seems infeasible uh, for animators to unionize. Unionization is a practice of forming labor union, which is already relatively unpopular in Japan, with only 17.1% of the Japanese workforce unionized. So they're already like working against the grain here. Like even if they wanted to unionize, it's already very unpopular. And as I just said, there's 17.1% of the Japanese workforce is unionized. That's all of Japan. Like all of their workforces, only 17.1% are unionized which means that the the employers have basically absolute control over the employees and the employees have no way to make their conditions for them better. Uh, th this is something we don't really talk about on the Otaku Experience, but the work conditions and the work environment as a whole in, in uh, Japan are awful. There's a reason why there are so many anime and why the vast majority, probably 90% or more of anime focuses on teenagers. And if there's a, if it's a slice of life thing, they're in high school. The reason why is because and and yes, you know, uh, Japan does have a, a, a you know a thing with um, with with younger people, uh, but because um, I don't know, it's just it's it's not based. It's weird. It's dumb. But anyways, um, they they like the teenagers. Um, but another reason is that for them. When you're a teenager and you're in high school, that's kind of where your life peaks in Japan. After that, you join the workforce and that's just all you do. You're there. Uh, overtime is just considered to be the normal standard where the workday ends, but you don't leave. You just stay there until like it's nine o'clock and then you go home and you don't even go home. You go and have a drink at a bar with your boss and then you go home and then you wake up and you do it all over again. People have no life outside of their job in Japan. And so with that, on top of the fact that they're not even unionized, I think you can see the problem here. But going back to this article, uh, veteran anime producer Masuo Ueda, uh, Sword Art Online, Cowboy Bebop the movie, joined Terumi Nishi, character designer for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, on her YouTube channel to talk about the, lacks of, uh, the lack of unionizations uh, in the animation industry. Both Ueda and Nishi express a general acknowledgement of the apathy most animators feel towards their own situations, as a majority of the industry is powered by freelancers. It would be difficult for freelancers to form some sort of a coalition, as there would always be someone else who would be willing to take uh, uh, will, who'd be willing to work for lo lower pay. So that's kind of the other big problem is number one, they're working against the grain, trying to unionize in an environment where unionization is very, very unpopular. The second thing is that it's a bunch of freelancers. Like there's no like, like place, like they don't just stay somewhere. Like animators themselves will bounce around to different places. Like, um, I, I, yes, there are animation companies, but there are also a bunch of freelance animators. I'll be like, I'll work on this anime, then I'll bump to another studio and work on that anime. And, you know, the people I was working with will stay over there, and then some other people split off and go to a whole new show. And they just bounce around whatever. Uh, it's a bunch of freelance work. And so, yes, it's harder to get people to unionize when they're not really technically employees of a specific thing. They can just bounce around to whatever. And on top of that, even if they did convince all the people working to unionize, there are other freelancers who are trying to break into the industry who are also talented, who would be working, who, who, um, who would be willing to work for even less pay that the studios would work with just so that person can get their name out there. And they would accept those bad working conditions just because they can get into the industry for even lower pay and get their name out there. So even if they did unionize, those are the problems that they're looking at. Um, and then there was, uh, there's a, um, they talk about, for example, like foreign, um, animators, there's foreign animators that, uh, that anime studios will outsource because a lot of anime has become digital now where they're outsource it to foreign animators and those animators will, will animate it and send it back and they make money doing that. And with all the talented people across the entire world, if all of the animators in Japan, uh, who work there unionize and suddenly go on a strike. Who's to stop the studios from just doing freelancers abroad? 
or even freelancers in Japan. And then you can see the problems that are going here. So those are the big problems with the unionizing. So I know what you're thinking. It might be a lost cause where they don't even want to. That's actually not the case. There's another article here from CBR where a Jujutsu Kaisen episode director wants to see these people unionize and wants uh, SAG AFTRA, they even name SAG AFTRA, they want them to come basically like give a big talking to, to everybody involved. This comes to us from CBR. Representatives of Japanese film and anime hope that the acting union and SAG AFTRA can inject their knowledge into a crumbling anime industry. Discussing the ailing anime industry, Full Frontal sat down with animation director Tairumi Nishi, Jujutsu Kaisen, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, and voice actor Ayano Fukumiya. Fukumiya represents NAFCA, Nippon Anime and Film Culture Association, and explained to Full Frontal why, despite NAFCA being an association of like-minded uh, individuals, it is not a registered union. Well, a lot of people are afraid of dying, but what we're fighting for is our rights. So first, we need to educate people about history and, co and collective action, she said, because if we start up a union right now, nobody will come. We mustn't rush and skip the steps. So she's basically saying exactly what I was saying. If they start a union... No one will join the union. Uh, as things are today, it's a time where a lot of people are afraid of dying, Fukumiya continued. She highlighted that it's not just in Japan, but globally that labor conditions are under strain. Talking of overseas, we're all feeling the impact of the Hollywood strikes. I wish SAG after people would come to Japan and make speeches. There are still actors in Japan who don't know what's been going on. We're at that level, so first we need to properly relay that kind of information. NAFCA was established on April 27, 2023 by notable anime and film staff, including Masuo Ueda, former president of A1 Pictures and Aniplex, uh, Masuru Kitao, uh, chief animation director for Attack on Titan, the final season part two, and voice actor Yuko Kaida, uh, Sylvia Sherwood, Spy X Family. Principally, they wish to become a power that can exert pressure on the government to improve standards with rising wages and improved production lines for overworked staff, also priorities. Fukumiya highlighted that the anime industry is crumbling because of the lack of staff, while Nishi stated that while the frustration is piling up, nobody will actually do anything yet. It's hoped that NAFCA can foster connections, creating a community and developing links that go beyond just animation. And so that's kind of where this story ends, uh, for the most part. Uh, at least that's where we're at. We're at this point where the tensions have gotten so high that the public is super aware. Before it was some, like a big map of diehard fans that were aware. Now it's like the public is aware of what is going on here. The directors are speaking out. They're upset about it. Uh, the animators have been upset about it this whole time. There are people leaving the jobs. There are people saying they won't go back to help. And the situation just gets worse and worse. And when they even call for a, just a little, like, please, Mappa, can we just have one week of a delay? Mappa says no. And so the only way to fix these things and to force Mappa and the anime industry as a whole to make working conditions better for the people who make the stuff that they're selling is to unionize. But they're in a situation where uh, they're in an environment where unionizing is very unpopular. And if they made a union because of the inherent market that they're in, there's a ton of freelancers. So there's a chance that not a bunch of people join. And even if those people join, there's other freelancers who can come in, get paid less and still get the work done. And so MAPA and the other studios wouldn't even care about the unions being made. And so now there is a call by some of these people in the industry to make unions and to do it on the level that we just saw in the Hollywood strikes um, and to have the, the effects on their industry that the Hollywood strikes and the Hollywood unions had on theirs. So that's where this story sort of ends up today. Probably the lowest low we've hit in this MAPA situation. Um, I hope it doesn't go any lower. I hope it just gets better from here. But we really need to just continue calling out MAPA. That's really all we can do, especially us who don't, who aren't like actively involved in this industry or are just across the season, can't really do anything. All we can do is just call out the problems that are being, uh, the, the problems that are there that we can see plain as day that MAPA has no interest in fixing. We have to call them out and basically show the animators and everyone involved 
that we're behind them 100%, and that will ultimately give more people enough belief that maybe they can unionize, and then hopefully, you know, one thing leads to another, and maybe, you know, in a few months, maybe a year or so, we're talking about maybe some big union steps being taken because it really, really needs to happen. All right, and our last story for this episode is this. So High Dive, uh, probably the biggest streamer, legal streamer outside of Netflix. High Dive is purely an anime streamer, just like Crunchyroll. Netflix has a lot of anime, but they're not a purely anime streamer. So being a purely anime streamer, High Dive is probably the second compared to Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll uh, bought by Sony. Um, and Sony bought Funimation, and they merged those together, and so Crunchyroll kind of just has this giant monopoly on anime licensing, and so High Dive's had to compete with that by having really low subscription costs, um, by paying a bunch to outbid Crunchyroll for anime, uh, for, for, you know, a few anime every season and their dubs, and it's just been really, really, uh, interesting to watch and we've always at least me and maybe others but I've always been kind of like I wonder like how is high dive surviving like how are they paying like how are how are they how are they doing this they're not and here's here's the thing high dive is actually um being shut down in multiple countries so here's an article from anime news network that says High Dive modified a listing on its support page on Monday to state that the service will no longer be avail- available in certain areas outside of North America, stating on December 14th. Starting on December 14th, full access to High Dive's library will be available on the service website through December 31st. The company did not give a specific reason be- beyond that it is a decision that has been made after constantly evaluating the High Dive offering and its area of operation. And then uh, High Dive provided Anime News Network with the following statement. In light of strong demand for anime content around the world, we are constantly evaluating the High Dive business and strategically focusing our operations on the fast-growing global markets that represent approximately 98% of our current customer base. This move will unfortunately result in the disruption of service for some customers outside of our major markets. We are working directly with those customers uh, to manage through this transition. So to me, this is clearly they're just losing money and they have to cut down on their operations that aren't in their biggest areas. So I don't think High Dive is gone yet if it leaves, but it's only going to be in major countries. I know they're staying in North America and I know they're probably going to stay in their other major markets, but those other markets, if you, uh, if you want to know which markets are getting shut down, check your email if you're a High Dive uh, member uh, they would have sent an email to you if it was being shut down. And I had people messaging me throughout the week being like, hey, I got this email, what is going on? And yeah, it sucks, but it, it's something that I wasn't surprised about. Um, and honestly, I'm surprised it took this long. Like, I think High Dive has held out really well. And I, I really like High Dive. Um, I really like their user interface. Um, I prefer Crunchyroll's, but, you know, Crunchyroll's the standard. Uh, but... I, I, I don't like the monopoly that Crunchyroll is getting over the anime licensing business, um, but there's really nothing we can do to stop it. It's just eating up everything. And so I only see two outs for this, either uh, Sony and Crunchyroll wait until High Dive slowly goes out of business or High Dive uh, gets merged into Crunchyroll when Sony buys it. There is a third option, but I think it's a lot less likely, and that's that High Dive stays around, but it just stays a very, very small, in very few countries, anime streamer that gets like one or two major anime every season, and then the rest go to Crunchyroll or Netflix. That's the problem, and it's it's really sad to see because I really like High Dive, and so I, 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 don't, I don't want, you know... I, I didn't like it when Funimation got taken. I don't like it when High Dive's getting taken. I didn't like it when Verve, uh, when, when things happened with Verve. Eh, I, I, I'm not surprised, but I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm happy with this. Uh, it just really sucks, and there's not much information about why um, they're doing it, other than just my own speculation. Um, it just really sucks. 
All right, guys, we're going to move on to the anime rankings over the past week. We're going to start with the anime corner. At number one, they have Attack on Titan, the final season, the final chapter, special two, which is a new entry into the top 10, and it will be only this week. It won't show up next time because, you know, it's just one episode. Jujutsu Kaisen season two uh, moved up uh, three spots from rank five to rank two, and that got 8.55% of the vote. I forgot to mention Attack on Titan uh, got 17.47% of the vote. Ragna Crimson uh, goes up nine spots from rank 12 to rank three, and that got 8.01% of the vote. Uh, Free Run Beyond Journey's End goes down three spots from rank one to rank four, and that got 7.92% of the vote. Apothecary Diaries went down one spot from rank four to uh, rank five, and that got 4.22% of the vote. The Eminence in Shadow Season 2 stayed at the same rank at number 6 with 3.59% of the vote. Spike's Family Season 2 went up two spots from rank 9 to rank 7, and that got 2.71% of the vote. And at number 8, we have Dr. Stone New World Part 2, which stayed at the same rank at number 8, 2.19% of the vote. Dead Mount Death Play Part 2 went up five spots from rank 14 to rank 9, that got 2.01% of the vote. And Moon Empire got... Uh, went up 15 spots from rank 25 to rank 10, and that got 1.96% of the vote. Moving on over to the anime trending, at number one, we have Free Run Beyond Journey's End, which has spent four weeks at number one. At number two, we have The Apothecary Diaries, which has spent two weeks at number two. Then we have Spike's Family Season 2, which has spent two weeks at number three. Uh, the 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You went up two spots to rank four. The Eminence and Shadow Season 2 went, went down one spot to rank five. The Vexations of a Shud and Vampire Princess went down one spot to rank six. Uh, the Rising of Shield Heroes Season 3 went up three spots to rank seven. Undead Unluck went down one spot to rank eight. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier is a new entry into the top 10. And I'm in love with the villainous went down two spots to number 10. And so those are the audience rankings for this week. And now we're going to move on into the comments and the questions, starting with Sam Fisher, who says, and I forgot to click the read more option again when I made the graphic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we can still read um, a little bit, though. Um, I would love for them to either adapt a Breath of the Wild. Uh, so obviously, this is talking about uh, the Zelda live action film that came out, um, or the news that they're making a live action Zelda film that came out uh, last week and we talked about in the last episode. I would love for them to either uh, to adapt either a Breath of the Wild or the 100 Year Calamity before Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is like Mortal Kombat 1. It is a great starting point that isn't beholden to all of the games and timelines that came before it. Also doing the 100 Year Calamity from the memories of uh, Breath of the Wild would also be great because it gives you a great five man band structure in Link and all the other champions. And Zelda isn't directly in danger, so she doesn't fall into being the damsel. Uh, and I would also love for them to go to the andro androgynous uh, for both characters, since the original creators always saw them as androgynous, I saw a really great fan cast of Morgan Davies and Hunter Schaefer as Link and Zelda. Davies played Kroby in Netflix's One uh, Piece, and Schaefer plays Jules in HBO's Euphoria. That all sounds cool to me. I don't know anything about what you just said. Uh, I know about the One Piece stuff. Obviously, I know stuff about Zelda, but uh, a lot of that just... Whoosh. I'll be totally honest with you. But thanks for your thoughts. I, I hope there's people in the comments who knew what you're talking about. You got three likes, so I assume some people agree with you. Anyways, we have Lady uh Lady Man Lady Man Door reviews. Okay, I hope I pronounced that right. Great review of Attack on Titan. I wish that we saw more development from Mikasa, and I would have loved to see Eren's farewell to her as well. I also I didn't get why finishing off 80% of humanity is good for his friends. I mean, I can I guess it can make sense, but it's still not justifiable. Also, I feel like the squad bounced off pretty fast from the battle of their lives. But I still think that the show ended great and the finale was very epic. I agree. You know, I think it, and it's weird to say <clears throat> about an anime episode that's like almost 90 minutes being like, I, you know, I think it was a little rushed, <laughs> but I, I kind of do. Um, I, especially once the battle ended, it was kind of like, and we're done. Um, it was a little weird. Uh, some of the choices I didn't enjoy, um, where Isayama was going, but there's a lot of stuff that I still really enjoyed that I, I really love the realism about it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I still love the episode. Sam Fisher also says, I described Freerun as Lord of the Rings, but if Lord of the Rings was about Legolas connecting with humanity after the death of the rest of the Fellowship, that's not bad, except I think Freerun is more interesting than Legolas. Legolas is great as a side character. I could not see Legolas leading a, a thing. 
Um, Legolas is a fun supporting character who doesn't have that much depth, but is just really entertaining and has a great personality. But uh, I, I don't really see that being the case. But uh, I, I think that's, you know, just so people can get the premise. That does make sense. Freeman's an elf. Legolas is an elf. So I can see I can see the connections being made there. The uh, the enzyme says, dude, you look like a young John Oates from Holland Oates. Totally mean it as a compliment. Love those guys. I think that's a band because uh, I saw Rob tweet something about that. So I appreciate it. I appreciate the compliment. And then Mark Spector's avatar 5187 says, I think we should scrap this and review Loki. I did not know Loki was an anime. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of the Otaku Experience. A lot of sad things this week with the MAPPA thing going on and then High Dive basically being shut down in most, or maybe not, they didn't say most, but in a lot of uh, countries. Um, so that really sucks. Hopefully things can get better all around. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode.